Once again, by the grace of God, and I am thankful that the Lord has kept you up until now that we can fellowship together tonight. Before even I delve into to prayer, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Kelvin Masharia, and most of all, I love saying this, and I will continue to say it, that I am born again. Jesus saved me from a lot of things, and more so from the fires of hell. And tonight, I am privileged to share God's word with you tonight. And before even I delve into the devotion itself, I promise you, it's going to be radical. So get prepared. If you're taking some tea, you will need to give yourself 10 minutes before that tea becomes warm. Because tonight, it's about knowing the heart of God. So, the word of God tonight, we're going to read from the Gospel of John. John chapter 8, one of the most controversial stories we do know. Some of us are experts in this, whereby the Pharisees, the chief priests, the scribes, they wanted to test Jesus. They wanted to trap him by his words and to make Jesus to compromise the law though not, not necessarily compromise the law, but to put Jesus at a place whereby they would have a platform to accuse him. But Jesus, being God and being man, he was too smart. And in John 8, John 8, giving you a background of this, it is that we do not see the condemnation of the Son of God but we see the conviction of the Son of God. The Holy Spirit was upon Jesus. The Holy Spirit was in Jesus. Remember in Matthew 3.16 that when he got baptized, Jesus, when he came out from the water, the Holy Spirit came and the Father spoke that this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. We see the Trinity. The Father speaks. Are we together? The Holy Spirit descends upon the Son and then the Son is sent into the wilderness. We see three in one event. That's how powerful God is and that's how God manifests himself in his word. And so in John 8, allow me to read to you tonight. Verse 1, the Bible says, But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. And in verse 2, now early in the morning, notice that word. Now early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. Jesus used to love teaching God's word and remember his message in Matthew 4, 17 was about the kingdom of God is at hand. So Jesus came to talk about the kingdom of God. And in here in verse 2, it tells us that he came into the temple and he began to teach to teach he was a teacher and verse 3 then the scribes notice that then the scribes and pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery and when they had set her in the midst they said to him teacher this woman was caught in adultery in the very act according to the new king james now moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned but what do you say and look at verse 6, according to John the writer. This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear anything. So when they continued asking him, you can imagine the questions. Should we stone this woman? Because she was found in the very act of adultery. Verse 7 it says, So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her. Let me just repeat that so, so that 
you may give yourself some time to sip some tea and internalize what Jesus said here in verse 7. He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. They, they, they had stones. The chief priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, the people who knew God's word theologically, they had this on their hands. And they wanted to accuse Jesus. They wanted to have some ground to accuse him. By bringing this woman there in the temple, notice, in the temple, at the temple where he used to teach God's word, they were ready to stone this lady. They were ready to mock her. You can imagine the scenario. But let me remind you in John chapter 3 verse 16, and more so not 3 verse 16, but John 3 17, the Bible tells me that the Son of Man did not come into the world to condemn the world. But rather the world through Jesus Christ might be saved. Those are not the words of John, the writer of the gospel. But those are the words of Jesus Christ telling Nicodemus the mission of the son here on earth. And so here in John 8, this man having stones in their hands, they were willing to kill this woman so that they may have grounds to accuse the Son of God. The Son of God did not come to be accused, but rather the Son of God came to save. That was the mission of the Son of God. And let me tell you, according to John, the story we have read, Jesus stooped down on the ground. And he wrote a writing that we have never known until today. They were ready to kill her. They were gossiping about her. Buona sifiwe. They were talking about her. And tonight I'm here to remind you that we need to be compassionate the way Jesus was in John 8. Why? Because at times in church we need to be our brother's keeper. When somebody comes and tells you, brethren, pray for me, pray for them. They should not be a prayer request, but rather they should be. Somebody that you will stand in the gap for in prayer. They should not be a point of discussion. I know I, I know I'm being controversial a bit, but that's the truth. We need to be compassionate towards each other, beloved. We need to understand that Jesus had the heart of the Father in heaven. Jesus did not take the stone to stone her, but he said, Whomever has no sin, cast a stone at her. When we talk about a fellow believer badly, when we gossip about a fellow believer badly, and believe you me, I have found myself at that place, participating in something that I should not, should not be in. And I realized even Jesus saved that same person. Even the blood of Jesus was shed for that very same person who I'm talking about. Tonight, I'm here to remind you that we need to have the heart of the Father. And my theme to you is this, be compassionate. Be compassionate. Jaribu kueleo yo ndugu. Jaribu kueleo yo dada. Don't take the stone and stone them as if God doesn't mean anything to them. Actually, God means everything. I'm here to remind you and to remind myself that Jesus did not take a stone to stone her. But get the revelation behind this. Jesus became the cornerstone for her. Allow me to repeat it. Jesus became a cornerstone for her and me and you who is watching. Why? Because when you understand that the heart of the Father, when you understand that we need to be compassionate towards one another, we will be like Jesus. We will cry when somebody tells you, pray for me. We will sacrifice our comfort zones, our sleep. 
we will lock ourselves in the room and cry for that brother and cry for that sister and tell God, God have mercy upon them. And God, may you uplift them because God, you, are sent, you sent your son for them just as your son was sent for me. Be compassionate. That is the theme tonight. Be compassionate. Like the son of God. He didn't take the stone. But he became the cornerstone for that lady. And do you know what? Even Jesus is still the cornerstone for you right now. At times I do face my dark days <laughs> and I wonder, eh, mungu baba, nisaidie. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 29, I love this scripture. He gives power to the weak. And to them that have no might, according to Isaiah's writing, he, get this, he increases their strength. Let me, re let me repeat it. I want you to get this tonight. I don't want you to go empty-handed. But I want you to remember you are never strong on your own. He gives power to the weak. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. And the following verse, it says, Even the youth will faint and be weary, and the young men will utterly fall, and the young men will utterly fall. But those who wait upon the living God, he will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not faint. They shall walk and not be weary. Oh my goodness, that is the promise of God's word. That he will give you power if you allow him to. He will increase your strength if you allow him to. Tonight. I don't know why I'm so, so overwhelmed with this message tonight. But we need to be compassionate. Some of us will, will be like, Kelvin, what are you telling me? I need to go and sleep and count sheep. You know, count the sheep when we sleep. You know that kind of a scenario? Well, tonight I'm not here to tell you to count the sheep, but I'm here to tell you, converse with the shepherd that you need to be compassionate. And if you have gotten that tonight, may the Lord God bless you. Allow me to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name tonight, you're reminding us to have your heart, not our hearts, David in Psalms 51 verse 10, he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. That is what a man after your heart, O God, confessed entirely from his being. He knew his strength is you. And tonight, Lord, we need your strength. In our walk with you, we need your strength. In our devotion with you, we need your strength. In our fellowship with you, we need your strength. With our kids, with our spouses, with our siblings. Tonight, God, be our strength. And remind us that we need to be compassionate. Thank you, Father for blessing us tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for taking, your, for taking our sins upon your shoulders and crucifying all our sins at the cross of Calvary. I bless you tonight and I thank you for everyone who has watched this devotion tonight. Lord, bless them. Even for those who wanted to watch it, but for one reason or the other where they could not, God, you are faithful. Therefore, receive glory and praise. For we pray all this in the name of the Father who gave his only Son. And in the name of the Holy Spirit who helps us in our infirmities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Child of God, until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Shalom, peace and life to you.